Hi, I'm Kerry Lord from Toft. This video forms part of a series to accompany the Edwards Crochet kits, patterns and books. In this video I'm going to show you how I stuff an Edwards menagerie animal. Um, so I'm going to use a unicorn as an example but this would apply for all of the animals that are based in the standard form. So um, I always leave the stuffing till last. Um, this really is my personal choice. Um, if you're somebody who finds it quite difficult stuffing it at the end, um, my recommendation would be to stuff it maybe around when a hole decreases to nine stitches um, or certainly before six stitches if you are somebody um, that finds it quite difficult putting the stuffing in at the end. But I personally like to completely crochet everything, even down to six stitches, and then put all the stuffing in at the end. So. Um, I have always used a polyester stuffing um, with all of my animals. Um, this is for two reasons really. Um, number one is that I um, gave my original animals to my baby son and they are, I gift them a lot of the time to children to play with and the polyester stuffing in combination with the pure wool um, outer means that they are still hand washable or machine washable on a wool cycle if they've got the polyester inside. Um, the second reason is that having experimented with kapok and a pure wool even, um, kind of pure wool inner, I find that over time, um, and my original animals are now six years old, um, just coming up six years old, um, they don't bundle or bunch inside, so you don't end up with something that feels a bit lumpy. The polyester seems to be really good at um, standing up and staying fluffy within. So when I'm going to um, stuff, the first lesson really is less is more. Um, my animals are characterised by not having too much stuffing on the inside. You're using a really soft luxury yarn um, and you want to be able to feel that. So if you overstuff it by making um, the piece and the fabric really stiff, you actually won't have the chance to feel the stuffing um, properly. So as you can see, when I'm stuffing um, apart, I can break the polyester apart a little bit um, to try and keep it not lumpy. The last thing you want to do is to break a piece off and roll it into a ball to fit it through that end. Try and keep it as open and in one piece as possible. Um, and this is where your crochet become, hook actually becomes the most handy tool in the world is because as a pokey stick, those soft grip handles are brilliant for um, pushing the stuffing in through a small hole. Remember you need to manipulate that stuffing around once you get it in, so don't think it's just going to naturally fall into the best position. You do need to move it around a little bit once you've put it in, and you want it to show off the shape that you've crocheted. So this is a standard Ed's animal body. It's characterised by that lovely tummy shape um, that's not only cute but also means that your animal will sit up. And have a, have a look at the um, sewing up video that follows this one um, if you want to have a, have a look at that and how important that tummy is. You just really want to fill out the shape. You don't want to force the shape in any way with the amount of stuffing you're putting in. So that's my body done. And then on to my head. And I think the thing is I can't really state how much stuffing you should use um, inside an animal because all the polyester varies as well. Um, it varies massively when you get it. The, the polyester that I use that we sell at Toft is a high loft white polyester made here in the UK. Um, I think the quality is really good, um, but just be aware that it, toy stuffing does massively vary. Um, even polyester toy stuffing that you might think is the same product um, does massively vary in its quality. Um, some of it can be quite stiff um, when you put it in. So that's me um, putting in my stuffing on my head and my body. And the only um, note really is if you're going to be sewing an animal that's got a really heavy head, so say for example the lion, because you're only working the mane onto its um, head, I might put a little bit more stuffing in the head on one like that than I ordinarily would, just to make sure that it is going to be strong enough to hold up um, all that extra weight that you're putting on. But if not, it really is hardly any stuffing at all that's going in. Now, Ed's animals are absolutely characterised by their um, leg shape as well. This is a standard leg and um, you're only going to stuff the end of it. So it's about this much stuffing that I would use. Again, I don't roll it into a ball. I try to avoid that all the time. Um, put that into the top and push that down. So you'll always be stuffing all your bodies, you'll always be stuffing all your heads, you'll always be stuffing at the end of your um, legs 
with the animals and again I just you can see how much I manipulate that stuffing just to get it in the right place to try and keep it out of that leg because that's what means that it's lovely and floppy and um, when it's used as a top leg it means it can sit down when it's used as a bottom leg um, and it means it's brilliant if you are making them for little hands um, for somebody to carry it around because they can hold on to this bit really well with the stuffing in the bottom there um, you will occasionally be stuffing things like horns and tails, but your individual pattern will detail whether you need to stuff that piece or not. Um, so that's it really for stuffing. Very little, that's the lesson. Um, I use a polyester because I find it gives me, um, I guess, the longest life on my um, project when I've made it, but it really is your choice. Um, you can add weights. Um, if you wanted to, I've heard of people adding small sandbags. You just need to be really, really careful that you're sealing in all of those things. Um, and if you are making them for little children, I think it's always best to avoid those things so they're absolutely as safe as possible.